Good morning, folks. Despite the lower flare magnitude, one would have to say the sun is still active. Yesterday's sunspot group was more gamma class than delta, but that is changing today with strong delta spots building in the front and back of the group. Could see more M flares today. Of course, the other eruption threat is that of plasma filaments. They are coming in on the south and on the north. And folks, I am still waiting for a significant CME impact, so is Earth's magnetic shield. It appears that the endless spirals were quite ambitious, exhales all around. Except if you are a quake watcher. We've been below average quaking for days on end, but Jupiter is conjoining the Sun, which has a tremendous goose-shaped coronal hole on the southern hemisphere, and the watch is going up. Yesterday, a magnitude 6 earthquake struck north of the New Zealand main territory, actually rang as high as 6.3, but was downgraded as low as 5.7 by the USGS. Top news includes the Japanese ISS cargo arriving 20 minutes early, which sounds great, but it actually means, why was your to the millisecond math off by 20 minutes? The coronal heating problem, alphan waves shifting through filaments set off interacting waves that caused the heating. Funny, those are the same waves from coronal holes that more effectively transfer energy from the sun to the earth. A tale of two lakes. Noah is advising that Lake Erie might be a bad idea if you value your health and that of your pets and kids. We're looking at some significantly toxic conditions. We've also got fires near Lake Bacall. The images are pretty cool, but the lake itself is actually of great interest. Look it up. Stormwatch sees landfall. A north shifting twin. Loki and Kilo not threatening much, but a new storm in the east has organized and heads at Hawaii right now. Danny disintegrated in the Caribbean, but we've got two systems we're watching develop behind him. Top weather news today is actually the deaths of at least 10 people after a crazy storm swept across southern France. The low identified yesterday shifted quickly into the channel and drew its convergence across the land. The lows have shifted again today, but the convergences will continue to hold the watch areas. There are more record cold temperatures coming to the U.S. according to the Weather Channel. We've got low pressure in purple, which sucks in counterclockwise, and the yellow central U.S. high pressure node pushes outward in a clockwise fashion. When I pull the precipitable water, we see the moisture sucked in along the swirl to the low and cleared from the high. But we also have a tremendous cold wave sliding down in there. And it makes sense. A counterclockwise low next to a clockwise high reinforce the wind drive in between them so the cold air is fired through the atmospheric rotor action. Ergo, the misery index for heat is worse in the Rocky Mountains than it is in the U.S. Southwest. Ridiculous. Australia and New Zealand, if you've seen even just a week's worth of news, you'll have no trouble spotting the low and convergence line here. There is only one feature today. We are eight weeks away from observing the frontier. Robitaille, Dunning, Talbot, D'Amico, Uyen, and Davidson, and the Fly on the Wall crew will all be there. Come check us out in October. Got your current conditions, and then shots of our star to close. It's 6.25 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.